Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about recursion. Recursion in Java, and specifically give you five simple to extreme examples of recursion in Java. Now, here's the simplest example of recursion that I can think of. I've got a class called Very Simple Recursion Example, and a method called Call Myself. I pass it the number nine. And then what do we do in this particular method? Well, we have this method call itself. So we pass in the number nine that gets passed in. So long as the number is greater than zero, we keep going. We print out the number and then we subtract one from the number. And then we call this method again with a number which is one less than the original. And then we print that number, subtract one, do it again, do it again, do it again. And when we do it, run as a Java application. As you can see, it just prints out the numbers from nine until zero. So that's a little recursive call myself method. And so that's pretty simple. It's a nice little straightforward example of Java recursion. Uh, if you want to take it to the next level, notice that you've got all of these numbers printed out. Well, hey, instead of printing out, why not just add them together? So instead of just going through and recursively calling the method itself and printing something out, why not actually return a number, which is the current number added to the number below? Anyways, here's what it looks like. So we're going to open up this file here, a recursive sum of all numbers. We're going to say, hey, let's start off with the number nine. Um, but what we want to do is we want to sum all of the numbers from zero to nine. So what we do is we pass this into the sum of all numbers. We go into sum of all numbers and then we say, hey, the number we want to calculate is nine plus the addition of all of the numbers under nine. So we then pass the number again and we say, hey, now add the number minus one to the number and then the number minus one to the number after that. And essentially what that does is it adds nine to eight to seven to six to five to four to three to two and we get the total. And so I'm going to run this run as the Java application and now recursively we've summed up all of the numbers from zero to nine 45. That's right. So the little trick is you take nine, multiply it by 10, gives you 90, half that 45. There you go. That's another way to calculate that number, but it doesn't do it recursively. That's what we're all about here. Okay. And so if you can add up all of the numbers from zero to nine, why not do a factorial? And a factorial is like one times two times three times four times five, like through all of the numbers right up until the number given. So there's the number nine there. And so instead of adding them together, let's multiply all of the numbers from zero, or really the number one to nine or to the number in question. So how do we do that? Start off with the number nine, pass it to the factorial program. Then this factorial program multiplies the number passed in by a call to itself with the number minus one. So the first time it's nine times eight. The second time it's that times seven times. We go through and eventually we get all of the numbers from zero to nine multiplied by each other. What is the value of that? Let's run the program. And then all of a sudden we get 36, 362,980. Okay, enough with this simple multiplication and addition. Let's do something really crazy. Let's print out the Fibonacci number system. What is the Fibonacci number system? Well, if I run this program, you'll see it. I'm going to say run this Java application. And you can see it works like this. You get start with one and one. And then the next number is these two numbers added together, which is two. The next one is three, which is these two numbers added together. And the next one's five, which is these two. So as you can see, basically the number that you calculate in this series is the addition of the two numbers prior. 34 is 21 plus 13. So how can we figure out what the next Fibonacci number is? Well, we've got a, a little razzle dazzle. We've got to do Fibonacci on two numbers. So for example, you can see that this number five here is the addition of the Fibonacci at two plus the Fibonacci at three. So what we do is we start off a nut with a number. We're going to say, hey, we're going to print out all the Fibonacci numbers up to the number nine here. We print out the Fibonacci number by passing the number nine in. The number nine goes in. We don't calculate the number one and two. And what we do is we figure out what the number is for the Fibonacci number one before and the Fibonacci two before in the series. And then that calculates the actual Fibonacci number that we're interested in. 
Um, so I'm going to run this program once again, and you can see this then recursively calculates the Fibonacci numbers. And there you go, that's probably the most famous recursive example. Now finally, I'm going to deal with some palindromes. And a palindrome is something like a man, a plan, a canal, Panama, sit on a pan, Otis. There's a number of different interesting palindromes out there. The number nine is not. Basically, it's any phrase or word that is spelled the same way forwards as it is backwards. And so this example is neat because it doesn't do numbers and math. What it does is it takes a string and it starts off and it says, hey, let's check if the first letter and the last letter are the same. So let's check if letter at zero and letter at length minus one, which is the end one here. Let's see if uh, those are the same. Um, if it is, then well, everything is good. Um, if uh, not, then we return false. But if it's good, well, we can't do just the first letter. We have to do the second letter as well, and then the third. So what we do is the palindrome check. So we check to see if the first letter is the same as the last letter. And then we do the palindrome check once again. But instead of the first letter and the last letter, we pass in the second letter and then the end of the string, well, in this case, minus one, which is now going to pass in only that part of the string. And now we're going to check this letter against that letter. And then we do this again, going in one deeper and one deeper every single time, both from the start of the string and the end of the string, until finally we can figure out whether indeed it is a palindrome or whether it is not. And so I do a little test here to see if sit in a pan Otis, the num letter word nine, and a man, a planet, canal, Panama are palindromes. I click run run as Java application, and you can see that the first one is true, the second one is false, and then the third one is true as well. And that's correct, that's a palindrome, that's a palindrome, and that's not a palindrome, and our little Java recursion example demonstrates that to us. And there you go, that's how recursion in Java works with five interesting little examples there. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We've got lots of great examples of Java code, enterprise software development, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on the YouTube.